Kings will have all the chance to get into top eight as we now head into the second to last game of the day is still going to be a wrangle. And yes, for some of these teams, I will say it's starting to become a case of you need to make those adjustments yeah. and they need to start getting as many points and salvaging the games that they're starting to have, which are bad games. Exactly. This is where we are as we take a look at the big broken nuclear reactor, I think they're called, right? Or at least yeah, something along a, those lines. It's yeah, I mean, silo reactor. Yeah, yeah, silo reactor nuclear thing. Yeah, exactly. As the plane takes us all the way across this one diagonally, once again, plane paths today, pretty decent. Pretty, even, pretty yeah. fair for everyone's circles. Overall, haven't been too brutal either in terms of the early ones. Issue with this last one was kept shifting into school and apartments. And I'm just going to say, I have seen it time and time again as much as people say, oh, but Twisted Minds just kept getting circles. Oh my lord, have I seen it many times where the team that drops in school just cannot withstand the amount of teams that come through. No, and the fact that Twisted Minds are able to defend, kill, reset and get ready for the new team to push them is insane because if just one fight takes a bit too long and a third team joins the party, there's no control anymore. And I think the two most impressive things about that, Toby, is first of all, the fact that they mainly did it as a three-man, right? Because yeah. Petulans was stuck in apartments for the longest time by yeah. himself, which he and himself did an amazing play against LG and multiple other teams. But the other impressive thing is that most of those crashes were not all coming at the same angle. We saw exactly. stuff happening as far as teams crashing in the northwest side. We saw teams crashing on the southwest side. We also saw teams trying to crash somewhere on the south, the east. Even Forrest, who managed to somewhat stay alive on the Northeast Shack, they were still held out by the three men of Twisted, which is just, it's crazy to me. And there really is no better team to showcase what Twisted Minds does in those sort of situations, regardless of whether it be the entirety of school or just be a small compound. Whenever they hunker down center early game, for starters, that is something they rarely ever do. They much prefer playing out on the edge. But whenever the circles do come to them early, they don't have a reason to leave. They do not like having teams nearby because the closer the enemy team is, the more RNG factors come in. You leave yourself exposed to the wrong angle for a second too long, they double headshot you, you're down and out. Nothing you could have done about it. So the further away you keep your opponents, the better off you are. The less RNG, so to say, are going to be playing a factor in your game. So whenever, like, for example, in a place like this, if there was a team to pull up on the hill across the street, you'd see instantly Petulans run into the street and start nading them. Yeah. Where others will just sprint into the bathrooms and wait things out. <laughs> they will actively <laughs> go out and say, are you sure you want to be next to our compound? And they did this in school, too. As you were saying, it wasn't the same area they were coming no, in from. Constantly adapting, constantly maneuvering around like a big organism to take down teams regardless of where they came in from. Yeah, and as we look at Twisted Mind and Perfectus specifically, let's also look at the circle, Toby, is it's going to be very much the similar. Uh, this one much more Pretty south. Much identical. So, yeah, I mean, again, that was a hard shift to the south. That last circle that yes. we had looked at, we, we were even talking about it. We're like, ah, it's probably going to go north, but it did not. And this circle, I mean, we'll say it should probably go south, but at this point I'm with the circles, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at this point, there's, really, there's no reason to say anything, but so far, Twisted has been amazing as well as Navi. I mean, those two teams currently fighting for the top two spots. What a time to get things going. I mean, uh, on our screens, thank you, Observers, as I was about to mention them. 17 Gaming, they won PGS1 off of playing in loser's bracket as well. They didn't get things going early on when their backs was against the wall, when it was a time for, if we do not do something now, we are eliminated from the tournament. They rose to the occasion, they turned things around, and off of the momentum they were able to kind of start building in loser's bracket, they carried that on through into grand finals and came off strong right from the get-go and came out victorious. So I think even if you are a team that does well in winner in group stage, then does mediocre in winner's bracket, sits back and watches this, there might be an argument, at least for some teams that are more momentum driven, that if you even go or even if you go into loser's bracket, as we see some highlights here. That might actually be the best thing for your team from a, like a mental right. perspective. Get things going against maybe some of the, I don't say lesser teams, yeah. but, but some of the weaker teams in the lobby and then get the, like, get the courage to take some of these fights you normally wouldn't and, and win because of it. Yeah, and let's call a spade a spade. I mean, there's no weak teams here, but as far as the grand scheme of things, when we do look at these lobbies, there are definitely some teams that have struggled against you know some of our top teams. And so that's a very good point, especially when you have a, a team like 17 coming from winners, getting the experience in the games they're obviously struggling and then coming down to the lord that's also just more games and more reps yeah. that they're getting yeah. on land which is very important i can promise you and tell you from experience myself yep sure uh, it's friendly fire team that would really want to get those things going and uh well, hopefully for them they will do exactly that we are gonna head over to an interview so let's hear what they have to say said 
obviously. We went into the tournament hoping that we would get into upper bracket and then straight to finals. That didn't happen. We're gonna have to bounce back. That's how it is. Obviously sad, but there's no time to cry, I guess. <laughs> We're just gonna have to play well. Well, it's gonna sound silly, but killing more people. Uh, we are getting into good positions, but then one small silly mistake costs us the entire game. Where we're, like, we're in a position to fight, we suddenly lose someone, and the game is literally just built around having four players. Uh, win fights, have circles on our side, have the right compounds, don't lose like, don't lose people on silly, silly mistakes, and that's it. Just play the way we are supposed to, the way we know we usually do. I actually really love Pixel's mentality there, mm -hmm. and he's absolutely right. And and I feel like he is one of those members on the team of Friendly Fires we were talking about in the last game. It's like you know what, boys, we just gotta get our, we just gotta get our stuff together, right? Yeah. We need to make yeah. sure because they are putting themselves. Friendly Fire has, if you look back at all the other games, have actually been in very good positions they for the most part. part. It's good. just making yeah. sure that they're winning those team fights. Is we've been seeing them get very scrappy. They're usually very good at controlling chaos, but it's just been again in these lobbies. This has been much more difficult. Exactly, and he's mentioned an important thing that we've talked about both regarding Friendly Fire but also other teams like Navi in the winner's bracket too. They're losing players early yes. on small mistakes that maybe, whether it be land jitters or whether it just be them again, not really being prepped for a situation that happens. Uh, it's just unfair. You, when you're going up against some of the best teams in the world, you'll get punished instantly when you do sort of stuff like that. So for them, I think it's, as you're saying, it's great to have a guy like Pixel that again acknowledges yeah. the issue. That's, I mean, the first part of getting things going. Uh, as Perfectix has found himself knocked. Maybe that's that's what the server needs in order to get points today, is just yeah. <laughs> kill Perfectix within the first 10 minutes. This this would be, not, Navi would be, be doing a massive favor to the rest of the <laughs> server. They can just get rid of Perfectix. <laughs> Because he has been, uh, again, just unstoppable on the server. And this is actually going to be a full-up pull-up from Na'Vi. And Twisted Minds trying to fortify as well. Lewis just arrived. Spiro is on his way. Oh. Yeah, but Tolan spots Ali on approach, takes him out. We'll get the flash on him as well. They still have yet to get Perfectix back on his feet. But at least now, it's a 3v3. That nade was actually very nice. Ooh. And it did a good, yeah. The, uh, the nade in the other room actually Ooh. stopped him from getting any form of cover. But Lou will now find a trade. But Twisted in a lot of trouble at school. That is a dangerous place to prone down and heal. If you're sat outside with Tidu Rabbit on Owen, just like that, exactly. Shen spots and peeks on over. Spiro now catches Uber on an off angle as he tries to make his way up the stack. As a Navi off of the knock that they get on some effect. They thought they had the upper hand here, but it's not looking good. Both teams tearing each other apart. And what was seemingly EMEA getting things going, I guess for the rest of the server, well, that's mutual destruction, EMEA. That's not too bad. I was just about to say, <laughs> the implications of these two teams fighting and going out early actually opens the door for all the other teams below them to start catching up in points. And so if you're in the server currently and you're seeing this, you're like, OK, yes, good. Fight. Keep fighting. Yes. Keep fighting. <laughs> because yeah. ultimately, yeah, they are going to be, I mean, we can imagine these two teams, especially going forward, are going to be point sponges. But now the interesting thing is, should both these teams get eliminated or at least get wounded to an extent where they can't really get a whole lot going, who is it that steps up? That's Who very is it that becomes the fracker of the lobby? Because we haven't really had any one team outside of these two. Being that today, let's see Mailman with the bolt. Boink, oh, Perfectix, you sit I still, shot. you get punished. And I mean, it's we don't see bolts as much now, obviously, and that's just because DMRs are so strong, especially mm -hmm. when you're you know taking shots at vehicles or, or whatnot. But they can still be very effective, as you saw right there. I mean, a, a knock can completely open up a push or a yeah. compound yeah. or a crash or anything like that, as we just saw. Sure could, sure could. Twisted Mind still with Spiro and Perfectix left alive as he did get back on his feet. We'll see if they can uh, find the final two in Millman and Example. And also, of course, have to keep an eye out for, uh, for Tai Lu, who has already gotten a flush on one and actively looking for any more impact they could have on this fight. So, I mean, fighting in school can still be very awkward. Oh, yeah. Multiple angles and multiple vectors of approach here, whether you're going upstairs, whether you're going downstairs to the gymnasium. I mean, there's just so many ways to push this. And again, yeah, the, the biggest issue is, again, Tai Lu is just watching over this anyways. And there's exactly. a lot of open windows that they have angles on. I think there were multiple times when Navi actually wanted to disengage in this. Right after uh, Elia fell down, they were like, great, can we do this? Then they lose one more. They're like, God, we got to go out. And the uh, issue for them is they really can't. The, the only exit where they are is to 
towards the north, and that's completely isolated. Now, Spiro not really doing himself any favors no. <laughs> by, by um, lighting the staircase on fire there. Maybe they'll jump down because of it. No, trying to engage from two different angles, I think. Yeah, this, and again, this is so nice difficult flash. because of that doorway, and so he's going to get the knock on the meld. And then example will go for the trade one-on-one -on -one between these two teams, but the volley lands in his face as Perfectus will survive momentarily, and he should be able to heal off this. Yeah, able to get the flush on one, and dies at 10 minutes and 3 seconds. So thank you so much, Perfectus. As now 17, having heard all the commotion, want to come in here, want to clean them up, want to take down Perfectus, but it is not easy even if you're four people alive to deal with a player that is currently feeling as hot as he is, and everyone has got Perfectus on their bouncy list. Expendable are coming in here full speed ahead as well to try and take him out as the circle has swung exactly where we were in the previous game. That's exactly why you see all these teams starting to send it into school. They know that the, the, the gods of school have essentially fallen, yeah, even yeah. though Perfectus is still very much alive. And so they would love to take this position and start to dictate control the way Twisted Minds did in the last game. Exactly. Now, I mean, this actually might just help out Perfectus. The fact that there's multiple teams here and uh, the chance of them running into each other could potentially give him a couple more points and with this one already kind of being a write-off for Twisted Minds any single extra point could be good for them they have three already but would want at least just a couple more for Perfectix to find and with the amount of teams in here Perfectix could absolutely make control oh, yeah. uh, make oh, yeah. something of the chaos that will be caused you see so many vehicles parked up in front of school as if it's a PTA meeting all these teams now starting to make their way in as we see full team of 17 you also see the expendables and Ty Lu still watching over this exactly and expendables well, starting to take casualties now as well. That's Tai Lu once more showing presence from that northern side, as we were just saying. They're realizing now, too, that good, we have to fully commit to it. And well, now they have that need. Might not have gone as far as Xiao Wu would have wanted it to, but at least they're here. But this is where the issues arise because what was before a great hold by um, by Twisted Minds, now there are two people sharing it. They cannot utilize this area of the map to anywhere near the same extent as Twisted Minds could before because you constantly have to be wary of any certain threat peeking around the corner yeah that's the problem again that we, we talked about it but the the fact that twisted were able to hold this as a three-man by themselves uh, is and they got pulled up three times too a again with the pull-ups is ridiculous and yeah we obviously some very nosy uh noisy neighbors now as 17 is just kind of sit on the south side here and that's pretty much left the expendables to kind of control the majority of the yeah. big school area yeah i think they realized quickly great we tried we we we, we didn't get what we came for. We thought we could time it better with the fight at hand, but with t Expendables pulling up immediately after, they're like, it's not worth the risk. We're currently set at 25 points. We want a good game here. Currently set dead center in the circle as well. There's no reason to risk losing two over a school that could potentially get shifted out of the circle exactly. um, in just 44 seconds. So smart on their part to assess the situation and realize that, you know what, the points are claimable later on in the game. We don't have to risk everything right now. Yeah, very wise from 17. It's a good pull off as we still see Ty Lu center and Razak just kind of dictating all of this and even looking at 4EM now who have opted not to send it into apartments. Much more happy at that garden eight pack compound. Look at this KM sneaking on over. Minu has no idea what's about to hit him. Takes him down as he creeps on up. The hair peeks up from over the hill. And just like that, that should be Minuta confirmed. Yep, a nice little kill there from E Arena as they do sit in 14th place with 13 points. And E Arena have a nice little spread here on the southwest. In fact, they're going to receive what is Sarvum coming in from Pachinki as the circle will shift. Very much so a little western this time around as we're not centered up on school. Look at the cluster of teams down towards the southeast already, though. We have DDT trying to wrap in from that side, too. We've got to keep in mind, one thing is water on the northern side, but the entire open field in the middle, you can't really utilize all that much, at least not yet. If you go there now, you're going to prone down behind vehicles and wait things out, and that's when motors come in play. The only viable place here in the center would be the waves just to the north of the compound day trade finds them in. But even then, that can be dangerous, especially, as you said, with the advent of mortars. Yep, it's not going to be easy at all. Good thing for Tai Lu is that currently they've got pretty much full control of Rasak up towards the north. Um, but I would doubt that they're going to be able to sit there alone for much longer, especially with 4AM slowly creeping in that direction. Now DD team trying to wrap through the center of the map, led by Captain Mamu. Where are you planning on settling down Probably and how waits. soon, how yep. soon will the mortar start ringing in? Oh, but look at this. Day Trade was trying to deny it, but now they do have DD team above them. And so I actually would have loved to see potentially a split here between the two two stories and that area. But they will allow DD team 
to find a window to get in. And this spot is actually much more, do unless you have mortars, this is actually a very safe spot in the circle is. currently. It is. Again, this is a situation where... one of my favorite areas to play in the circle. This is a situation where if, let's say it was Twisted Minds playing where Day Trade currently is, Day Trade on approach, they shot early, didn't get a knock, instantly back off. You'd be seeing Batulans yeah, sprinting out yeah. with nades in hand right now to try and clear them out for their position, or at least have them like more respect the team on inside the compound. This time around, though, DD team gets to stay put in the waves area, and uh, so does people at school. It's Speaking of, Twisted Minds Perfect is still alive chilling. somehow. Yeah, he has managed to survive, and he could potentially, again, just still have a very big game and getting points, not only eliminated a few teams around him in Expendables of 17, but also just kill points alone. So we'll see if he can survive much longer. Obviously, Circle being very helpful to him as yeah. he'll be able to kind of salvage this game for a team that I would say doesn't even really need salvaging at this point. Doesn't need salvaging at all. They're on a pretty good stride to make grand finals. Of course, there's no telling what's going to happen either in the last game or tomorrow's matches, but at their current 57, up in first place, Twisted Minds is looking very, very good for grand finals. So Forest as well, they're going to be rotating here in the south just to the Forest, the northwest of where we see Potato Hill now currently cut out of the circle, and they will have a decent amount to play here, but I do worry about what their next move is going to be, especially if the circle does shift to the north, as they're going to have to go through multiple teams in LG, Day Trade, and even E Arena. As Sarvam as well is going to be caught on the end of this, and we have seen with them, if they're not given circle, they do tend to struggle getting in. Hmm. Let's see 10 seconds from now, next circle's gonna pop. We're gonna go away from water. Of course, there's very limited water available up on that northern side. So do we go towards school? Do we go down towards that southwestern side? I think that's what everyone is waiting, trying to figure out. And we are once oh again my heading goodness. towards school. Almost the exact same circle we saw earlier. A little further towards the west, leaving more of the field in. But if you're GP, if you're um, if you're a D plus Kia, if you're EA, and Savam as well towards the south side, you gotta find a way into this circle and it ain't gonna be easy. Yeah, it looks like Sarvim is actually gonna opt to go towards the team of Forest as they are now rotating just straight in. They might even just go for a crash on the backside of where LG is, but they're gonna have to run through multiple teams and this is all but a blind send. They don't have any information on this. Nope. Driving full speed forward, scouting as they go. Full speed pulling up on... I say pulling up on Luminosity. I think they saw a few more players than they wanted to confront and dodged off. A good thing for them because Snakers was ready with a uh, with the Panzerfaust in hand. Ixlep will find one. That's Sheila on approach to the compound, but the rest of Savim will make landfall. And you know what? The Rotating west of Pachinki into this losing one? That it could have been close. way, way close. <laughs> yeah, so they'll be very happy with this position, at least for the time being, as you said. They did, they did manage to get two there, but CC is He's actually stuck now right next to Luminosity as his vehicle did have issues. Did kickstart and luminosity in the middle of all the chaos that just kind of ensued with the cars roaming past their compound realize that they dropped one I'm i don't not know sure and if they don't i mean of course i mean i would imagine especially with the sub and play style being taken into account that they will play this one pretty safe but CC could potentially become a threat, and now we're seeing them all starting yeah. to fly down towards DD team. A bit short they go, but that's DD team now well aware. They lost on Tego due to the mortars of Sabim. They have to spread out. They have to try and claim some sort of control in an area where there just isn't any to take. Well, and at the very least, as we were looking at Game of PT, we do see that they've actually taken the high ground position over Tai Lu, and yeah. so they could very well hold them at that point, as we see HSMM getting a nice knock with a bolt, speaking of, uh, on the member of uh, Tai Lu. The arena playing this one slow out from the west as well. Not the same can be set for 4AM. We saw the knock come through from HSMM towards Xiaoyang, and that is going to be the go sign for 4AM. Maybe not to a fully committed push, but at least try and claim some control on the other side of the street. And as I say, they actually do full-on pull up. Xiao Lu is here. Crazy is here right by his side. They want to take out Tai Lu before this next circle pops so that they can make their decision on where to go without worrying about teams right next door. Yeah, are they landing on the roof? Yeah, they are actually. <laughs> oh, this is actually a disgusting spot, but the problem is yeah. LG, yep. look at this, and GPT yep. as well, no chance. Had they waited for the circle to pop, had they sat back and seen if this one swung north, so maybe LG would have left. This could have been a winning play, but instead, it became fatal. The thing I still worry about, though, for the teams in the north and Tai Lu at 4 a.m. is the fact that GPT is still there, yeah. and they still yeah. very yeah. much help kind of 
dictate the flow of that fight, especially with that high ground and especially with that shift as we are right back to school. What is going on, Toby? Uh, I mean, we get repeat games every now and again, but back-to-back -back school circles is not something I think I have ever casted before. I don't this think I is have uh, th this is something this is something completely off the script. I don't even think I've played in professional play. Okay. It was bound to happen. It was bound. We, was we bound didn't talk about it. Yes, yeah. this position. I love Don't it. Risk. But again, I didn't have to deal with borders. Don't risk right there, Cole. Do not stand. He's just gotten two knocks in this exact position. This is a very, very brave res attempt. Yep, oh, exactly. I was just going to say, if they get a knock there, you can be sure that they're going to oh, try and get the flushes too as Mamo and Spaceman fall. I feel like Cole could have tried and run off and get a rest, but they are getting bombarded. Neurons finds one too as they trade make perfect use of the utility to their disposal. The question is, how many more mortars did they have as nades are now starting to come in as Emo Pig would love to get cold up. But day trade is actually still not as aggressive on this. Nope. Running up for a brief moment, falling back instantly after us. Now Forrest has made their way towards the school as well. And again, because there are two teams in school, 17 can't fully commit to try to deny the access for Forrest. So we'll see. I mean, effectively, school become a mini city should the ending go here. A very, very different ending, potentially, to the one that we had in the previous game. Same area, sure, but playing out very, very differently as multiple teams are now inside the school area. Now. Which, again, we really have to point out again how impressive it was as you see the current setup Exactly. School, that Twisted Minds was able to hold that exactly. as a three-man. I mean, I, I know we've been talking about a lot, but it's just, it's almost unfathomable to think at how a three-man team could hold school alone. One thing is fighting teams off. Another thing is not taking any casualties while doing so and being able to finish the fights fast enough that you're ready for the next it's fight insanity. to come. Very impressive feat for Twisted Minds there in the previous games. And we'll see if Perfect can somehow <laughs> get some more out of this He's one. Still alive, He's still alive, He's still chilling. He's still chilling in school. He's got the school buff. We'll see what he can make of it. And now, as you see, yeah, Tyloo is starting to take fire at the team of 4AM as they're coming up that hill. GPT as well, still very much aware of this fight happening. Shen will find the nade. That's two members knocked now for 4AM as Tyloo is starting to kind of put things together here, Toby. I like the proactiveness from Tyloo here, realizing we cannot just sit around and wait for them to push us. If they don't make a play, we're going to be in trouble trying to get out from here. But Xiaolu, perfect angle, sat down below, finds the third. That's going to be crazy. They're going to get the instant flushes on them too. 755, nothing he can do. He was trying to wrap around, trying to flank, but Xiaolu knew exactly where to expect Tai Lu from. You could only imagine that he's going to fall next. Oh, but look nope, at this. No. Nice little angle. Shen and Tai Lu will actually wipe 4 a.m. They gave up the angle. They went back for the rest of thinking 755 was done for, but no. Not quite the case. In the meantime, Luminosity on their approach towards apartments gets taken out as well. Absolute chaos now as the circle will go straight wow. to school. This time a little more southern, but there's really not much to play on that side. And so, if you mind... So many points up. No! GPT Yoke is back! There's so many knock players just over the hill, Daku. You saw it in the kill feed. Oh, no. That's a massive best play. Oh, he's coming back for a need. Please just run back and need them. Thank you. It's Bob head. It's the janitor. He is here. No. No. Mm. <laughs> Do not spend more time on this. Just take them down already. Daku is going to be yes. the ones to get the quad. It should be. It should be the case. Are we going to be the first quad kill of the game? No, just two. Third one comes through the second time around. And please now make an aggressive play on this. You've got three knocks just down the hill. They just need to go for a trade. They're still playing this so passive with that amount of knocks and finally Daku will go up there and there we, we go. go. Thank you. Toby, you and I were... <laughs> it's okay. They, they got it done. It. They, they got it, it done. It's like watching that Miramar game all over again. They come out victorious. When push comes to shove, Game PT do come out victorious. They still do. And they did so here again. Yeah, but they still have to now make their way into the circle. So they do have one vehicle at the time being with four tires. That's going to be the buggy. Yeah. Crashing the west side of this isn't going to be the worst idea with these many teams being embroiled in a fight. But look at this. Forrest very well aware. And that's the issue, right? Because that's, this is where the stalemate kind of plays in favor for the teams inside school because they know that no one's going to push each other yes. right now. So they can all just sit in each their respective corner of school and hold the angles that they have available so uh, we'll see now if somehow game pt can make anything happen but where do they go as you see here yeah. so out far so far out in the open and within vision to pretty much well the rest of the server yeah part of this does come into the indecisiveness there of game of pt in order to yes. wipe that team if they were able to get rid of yeah. free trade earlier they might have actually had a much more 
kind of uh, much more time to scout and see what was going to be ahead of them because there is a ridge they could have played if they yeah. would have just been able to make it there earlier. Trying to commit to the southern rep. Jin at the Papsang head will now have to uh, take it on to himself to make something happen here. But he's outside the circle as the lone player. <sighs> and I think his days are counted. I'm not seeing him getting out of here alive. Okay, I'm just also looking at the amount of colors that we have into school and the amount of teams that we currently have in this. And we do, like I mean, this TDM. is more of a normal school circle that we're used to seeing, right? Multiple yeah. teams in here rather than just one being deny. able to fend everyone off. And so Bob's saying, hey, we'll just deny himself, I guess. Nope. You know, I, I, I don't, don't hate I'm it. not against that. There are so many it. teams in that area right now that could claim that point. And BO12, we've seen it time and time again that one point makes the difference from whether you qualify or not. So do not give that one away because there was no way no, he was he ever going to get out of their life. He was dead and he knew that. Yeah. So the, the deny read. is fine. There's Good nothing read. wrong with that at all. As we now look at Sarvam, two members left not alive as they are in the building that 4AM held in the last game here. This two-story just to the, just to the um, north, excuse me, of the apartment says, it's yeah, this school. is not a surprise. This is just school. What if, what if Perfectus actually still wins this game? I mean, there, he's probably going to get 10 kills then. It's it's written in the stars. For 17 game, and in the meantime, trying to find a way away from the, uh, the P90. Oh, the they just heard shoot from the other yeah. side. Nice little cook of the nade there. But of course, with people being this close to one another, we would have heard that peek around the corner, trying to bait some sort of attention. Not very really hard coming off and blue so nades. We gotta keep those in mind too, because they I mean the school ain't that big. No, and with not. blue so nades in the hands of most people, we haven't seen a whole lot of utility being used yet. You'd have to imagine that there are quite a few of them available between these players. That's actually what I worry about the most when these teams go for those breaches in school. Yeah. It's just the, the amount of utility that is still being saved, as you said, and blue zone grenades alone, the tons of nades, flashes. This is going to be a very difficult fight for multiple teams as Utility is going to play a massive factor in this. Everyone's going to have to cross on over as now Petrico and Sabim try to uh, say, are we going to shoot each other? Or are we just going to run side by side? Because we have to figure this one out one way or another. Global Army peeks on board. Has three nades available. And with the fadeaway headshot from the Org, you'd have to imagine there's an eight to follow. That's a double right there. Very nice spray down there. Is Summer now trying to get away? So they will be able to recover Mill. I believe so. Is Summer now trying to get a little bit more of a forward position? That smoke line, beautiful for Petrocore, but they still have to deal with Sarvam as Baron Peak will fall, and it's just down to Global Army. Again, this is where it works in their favor that no one is peeking them from school. Everyone is preoccupied with what's going on inside school. Exactly. And I think Petrocore is starting to that realize this. That's a good nade lopped on forward. There's one more to follow. Yeah. That is going to be Sarvam out. Summer gets the double as he tries to cross on over. And again, they had that beautiful smoke while they should be able to make it now as that smoke will kind of land on the back of Chewy, but even still, they have a nice amount of cover. But look at this Roth actually with nades as well prepped. He is in a great position to take advantage of this cross as the nade will find Mill. Summer trying to make the run on forward, but falls down as well. The sharp shot, second nade comes through as more kills come through. And looks like with Ike's left, the only one left to cross here, that school is definitely going to be out for Summer. Nice nade. Hey, <laughs> nice nades there. I see what you did there from Friendly Fire. They would love to clean these up and get more points. They're one of those teams that desperately need to make That's sure that they punch their ticket there and find themselves in the top eight, especially with a cushion if they can. Forest set on the other side, but honestly, I mean, this other side for Petrico right now ain't the worst place to be in. If they can dutch and weave all the utility coming through right now, they know for a fact that set on the wall, everyone is going to be fighting inside, and the circle does end outside in the somewhat parking lot fountain area of the school. So, I mean, if they survive this, that's like top three guaranteed. Yeah, it is. And as you see, you know, the, they've taken control of one of the, the nicer areas in school. As you already see Pixel on the bottom floor able to kind of spread out and see so much of what's happening there on the east side. And so, so far, this is going to be a very nice game for Friendly Fire as the push is now coming in at 17. Convention shotguns being locked on forward, but 17 in trouble as the shots come through from behind. It's Tanvu, it's Doc Juice from up high, doing a lot of damage to these teams on approach. And now Xiao Bei and Xiao Wu forced to fall back, and we still have Forest. Scappy is inside, but the other players have opted to go outside. I like this play a lot. Again, we know we're ending this one outside the buildings. No reason to go in there right now in similar fashion to go into a city if you know it's going to end outside anyway. Yeah, and I agree. I love the movements here coming from Forest. They haven't just kind of hunkered down and sat in one area, mm. right? They've been kind of rotating in, trying 
to maybe find an angle onto 17. If not, they go back off to this west wall, and they're just kind of poking and prodding, yeah. seeing where they, where they can do damage. And I, I love this from Forrest. Petricor spreading out here as well, knowing that at they any given moment, Nades could come on over. They get third up as well. Impressive performance from Mike's left to be able to get them back on their feet. I definitely thought they were done for as he was the last one to cross, but they make it happen. And again, as I said before, they're in a really good spot. But when do they pounce? When do they dare to peek? Because if the fights come to a close inside school proper before they wrap around, they're going to be instantly torn apart. So we'll see. Keep an eye on Petrico as all the fights in school are bound to happen soon. The dangerous thing here as well for all the other teams except for the Expendables is they've actually taken control of the top of school, right? Yeah, so they can yeah. actually peek down, they can throw utility down, they can also pour over and check what's happening in that parking lot area, which is pretty much where the circle is going to end at this point. And so they're going to have that high ground advantage as anyone pushing up those staircases is going to have to deal with hell. I can't even begin to imagine the effects in Blue Zone Nates are going to have if anyone still has them available once this circle starts closing in, which is will do now 15 alive in the last circle here crazy. with one more game left to play on this uh, second to final day of winners bracket losers bracket sorry summer peaks on over no city has munto on the other side and those smokes are going to isolate those two teams at least for a little while longer but they need to move up now for us as though even though we did say we like the way they've been moving into this they have been a little more you can't have Traps two teams on the south yeah, side. Yeah, it's, this is not enough. And as you said, blues on grenades starting to come in. That nade is going to land right on Summer. The knock isn't there, though. Forrest needs to make this fight happen and as quickly as possible as the circle is closing on their opportunities. Down goes Monto. He is able to lob one nade forward, but instantly followed by blue zone nade on top of himself. That's going to be Master down as well as he fell with the blue zone nade in hand. Both the two players should be done for. Pretty much guaranteed that is going to be Forrest down and out. At 17 now. Going for a push in, but look at this friendly fire coming alive. They the want to get rid of Petricor, but again, I said the Expendables would be the benefactors of this. The Molly is being loved on behind them as well. They have nowhere to run back to. So much damage coming through. Page can only sit behind and wait this one out. Such a smart play from Doc Juice, reading that they're trying to make the play on the side. And now Summer, freaking around the corner, shoots one, shoots twice, but he stood in the Molly. He cannot ADS, and therefore he falls. And Shui now trying to get the recovery, but again, so much control. It's Doc Juice again. Coming from the Top side of the Expendables as the Molly will hit and he's gonna come around, but no! Chewie will stop Paige and Friendly Fire will fall. Goes off the rest for a second, just enough time for him to take out the last remaining player from Friendly Fire. And now, back to the school, probably go as Expendables need to get out of these buildings. Twisted Mind still has perfect things alive, and here they come, Xiao Pei, able to find the first. And I told you there was a chance for Vectors will fall, though. And 17 doing the best that they can to fight back. They've taken Troll Fountain, but still, Petricor is very much a part of this. It's duos galores. It's the Fountain ending. We're seeing Blue Zone Nate's been lopped on in now. 777 is trying to single-handedly hold off Petricor outside. Again, as we said before, they haven't made their way inside the wall just yet. Now the wall is on them. They have to push around the corner. 77 fights one, finds the second. And that is Expendables out victorious with an 11-kill win. And finally, for all of their attempts, they find a nice game for themselves, taking that early, crashing that early. They do lose Delwyn, but again, the control that they had from the top side of school was just too much for the other teams to deal with on top of their amazing, immaculate utility usage. What a finish. Back-to-back -back school circles. It's almost as if the Navi uh, Twisted Minds fight in the early game had it written down. They knew exactly where the fights were going to be coming, and that was school. Frustrations in the faces yeah. of, of Friendly Fire, obvious. They thought they had it, but Dark Juice on the roof had a whole